what is up YouTube and today we have the balance adjustment preview coming on the 24th of October so actually we have a month before this balance patch actually comes to the game but you're gonna see that this patch is huge there's a lot of units being buffed and even some nerfs that we'll see down the line for some artifacts so you can see it's a huge list here right we have what is this six moonlight five stars we have uh, seven I believe regular RGB five stars two moonlight four stars and then two regular four star units as well with five um, five star artifacts also being changed and we also have the extra turn being changed as well which is mostly going to affect one of these artifacts here Rihanna and Luciella because if you guys have been playing Guild Wars or just RTA and you fight a Ran or Pera or any thief with an extra turn with this artifact you can kind of see them take like three or four turns and it's really annoying so because of that they are changing how the extra turns will which, how they work actually and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. First off, we have Ruel, so it's going to be a pretty long video compared to other balance adjustment previews because, yeah, there's a lot of buffs and changes, but first off, we have Ruel, and Ruel honestly was the character that was pretty useless outside of her S3, and now you'll see that she's getting a buff on pretty much all of her abilities, which will make her a lot better, so you're going to see that her S1 used to heal only one target, now it will heal everyone regardless if you soul burn it, and if you do soul burn it, I believe it'll heal more. Next, we have her S2 also being changed. Instead of CR pushing herself and use it, you'll give them a barrier and damage limit, the thing that the buff that actually prevents you from taking more than 35% of your max HP, the same one that Midnight Galilius has. It's very good. You'll also see that her S3 will actually be the same, but at the start of battle, you'll have a buff, Spirit Lord's Protection. I do believe that's undispellable. And you will actually revive with 50% health and CR push yourself by 50% after receiving lethal damage. So it makes it so that she has like a built-in RBS2. And that's very nice because, you know, usually people focus her down so she can't revive. If that happens, she reses and she can heal herself and it's just super annoying. So she'll be a lot more annoying to fight against. I don't know if she'll be super strong, but for Guild Wars offense, she should definitely make a return and be a pretty good unit. Next up, we have ML Araminta. So basically what's being changed is her Flame Friction. Um, basically, this is going to be her S1. Instead of that extra attack increasing her CR, which was pretty useless, it'll detonate burn effects, which is super, super powerful. And also, you'll see her S2. Um, basically, it was when an ally, except for the caster, uses an AoE attack, you'll get CR pushed, right? You're going to see that she gets increased attack proportional to her effectiveness now. And instead of your allies needing to use AoE attacks, you'll see that it's just going to see our pusher at the end of an ally's turn. So this is crazy. You can stack her on effectiveness to land your burns. And because you have this uh, passive now, your effectiveness gets con converted into attack. So you'll just have more attack. So you can literally put her on a full effectiveness build and still do crazy damage while landing your burns and your detonates, which will make her a lot, lot better. And now you'll see her S3 as well. Instead of having a um, you know, 65% chance to inflict two burns, you'll just land one burn, which is very, very good. Uh, it'll be two after you awaken it, so it's pretty much no change, except for the fact that it's just going to be way more consistent to land your burns here, because that's what she really relies on. So it's going to be way more consistent. Next, we have Last Rider Crow. So I'm not too sure why he's getting buffed. He was in an okay spot. He wasn't like super meta, but still had a niche against AoE attackers. First off, the barrier duration is two turns, which is a huge buff. Uh, because depending on speed tuning, this barrier wouldn't last that long. And also, you'll see that his S3 now decreases skill cooldowns of all allies by one turn. Don't know why that's a thing. That's just so random, but it's going to make him so much better, right? Um, yeah, just skill cooldown reduction we already know is like super, super powerful. So this can be used with a lot of you know bruisers, uh, just like any unit, honestly, and they get a lot of benefits. So it's hard to actually see how much of an impact this will make without seeing it in-game. So... Uh, but for now, I think that this is a pretty substantial buff, and just from his S3 buff alone, decreasing skill cooldowns, I think he'll be a pretty strong knight. Commander Pavel, uh, basically they're changing it so his soul burn is increased damage. Yeah, the cooldown reduction didn't make any sense, um, so just increased damage is way better. Designer Willabet will be way more consistent because you'll see that she gets increased defense and immunity now instead of just defense, which will make it so that when she procs her passive, you can't just you know stun her or silence her. Also, her S1 debuff changes from a silence to a decreased defense, which makes much more sense. Silence was pretty random. And instead of just CR pushing only her allies, she'll also CR push herself. And then she, get, she gets penetration uh, of defense by 50% with extra damage on her S3. So she'll actually hit pretty hard now. She's going to be harder to control 
Usually you can just proc her passive and CC her and she was pretty useless, but you can't really do that anymore. And then she also has this crazy, crazy um, S3 now that will do a ton of damage. So she'll be pretty, pretty good. I don't know if you'll actually pick her as your main um, cleanser because, you know, Fighting Spirit gets kind of countered by a lot of things such as ML Politis. But maybe she'll be pretty good in some comps or against some comps. Next we have Twisted Idol on Kron. So this is MLK Ron. I think it's a pretty huge buff. Um, it's a lot of text, but basically the barrier he's getting is actually going to be stronger now. Um, I guess, not the barrier, the damage that he's doing during counterattack is going to be stronger now. That's basically it, just extra damage. Also you'll see instead of that 50% CR increase when he gets max fighting spirit, it's 100%. Uh, you'll also see that his S3 is just going to do a ton more damage even without any stacks. Baseline it does 5k, right? And for each Fighting Spirit you consume, um, every 10 it's going to be extra 1,000, so just going to do a ton more damage, right? The damage dealt is going to be decreased overall, but the fixed damage is going to be very nice against tank units because, let's be honest, ML uh, Kron, you either pick him against like Cleave, which isn't really that great, or you pick him against super slow teams, so having more fixed damage over just like base damage is just going to be way better. And you'll see that not only will it go up to um, you know, 10,000 now as it did before, so before it was 9,000 to 10,000, it's going to be from 10,000 baseline to 15,000 after awakening. So basically now if you do get your S3 off, I do believe you should just win the game. That was kind of the gimmick behind MLK Ron. You know, if you get his S3 off, you just win. And before it didn't really do that. But now with the 5k fixed damage increase with um, another 4k, I guess 3k on top of that. So it's overall going to be an 8k fixed damage increase. I'm pretty sure if you use your S3 now, you'll win. When you're at max stacks so hopefully that's what happens that's kind of what he's built to do and i just think he's gonna be a super super good unit if that ends up being the case um but there's still his counterplay too right you know it's harder to actually use fighting spirit units similar to designer a little bit and honestly he is really hard to build still so there's also that next we have melissa so instead of her having to be low to do extra damage she's just getting flat damage increase nothing too crazy one of her exclusive equipments being changed when you kill an enemy with manifest, uh, Manifestation, you get AoE attack buff. Now you just get increased attack when using Blood Bloom, which will make her just a much more consistent damage dealer, which is what she is. Says is being reworked once again. Uh, instead of a rework, it's kind of just like a clarification thing. So they're moving his passive in, from his S1 into his S2. And also you're going to see that he actually gets a CR push now when he actually activates it. Um, and I do believe that the damage is the same, it looks like. Uh, but nothing too crazy, I think. Just gonna be the same for him. Um, yeah, I don't really see a big thing. Maybe I'm missing it, missing something here, but I don't really think Sez will change that much from this um, buff. Next, we have Elena. So, uh, this is the exclusive equipment you always run on her, right? You dispel an additional debuff from all allies when you use your S3, the invincibility and effect resist. Now that will be changed to her S2. So, when an enemy uses an AoE attack and you heal your team and you push up uh, with Elena, you will dispel a debuff then. And I think that makes much more sense because if you have like um, I don't know, just anything, uh, just, you can just cleanse it off right away, dispel it off right away, which is going to be much better, right? And this works before the healing, so you'll, if you have unhealable, you'll heal, heal yourself. Whereas before, if your team had unhealable, you know, you, you didn't heal them at all. Um, so this, this just makes her a lot more consistent against specific units. This is my biggest, biggest excited, like, this is what I'm most excited for. This is going to be Mort. So Mort, right? He had to rely on Enrage. Now he doesn't really have Enrage anymore. You're gonna see that for his S1, it used to just defense break, and if you're enraged, you ignore effect resist. Now if you just have more max health, you will ignore effect resist, which is insane. The damage is also increased. This is gonna be super, super strong against lower health units. If you stack more on full health and you defense break, you know, like knights and stuff like that, and soul weavers, it's gonna be crazy. Next you'll see his passive is absolutely insane. So First of all, he's immune to debuffs which prevent movement. I do believe that's the same as stun and sleep. Um, also, you can see all heroes except for the caster can now counterattack. So this includes your own team, so you don't want to pick any counterattackers with him, but you want to pick him into counterattackers. However, when an ally is attacked, he has a chance to counterattack, which is the same. And after counterattacking, you'll use Sacred Blessing. And Sacred Blessing used to be this crit hit resistance buff and speed buff for himself, which was okay. But now it's an AoE skill nullifier and increased speed. So the crit hit resistance is being changed to a skill nullifier, which is crazy. So that's a huge buff on his S2. Uh, the counterattack thing is really nice. It makes him very strong into counterattacking defense teams. He'll be very, very powerful there. 
uh, definitely will be in a lot of arena auto teams. You can also pick him in Gilder's offense. This just makes his usage go up substantially, right? Of course, if he gets sealed, uh, you can actually still counterattack, so be careful about that. But for the most part, you know, he's going to be very good into counterattackers. Next, we also actually have the uh, Esther being changed. So instead of injuries, he's getting rid of all of his injuries. He's going to apply fear and then also heal himself, right? He'll also penetrate defense now um, with the highest max HP and also ignore effect resist of any targets with max health lower than him as well. So he punishes units that have more health than him and less. So it's pretty crazy. And fear is going to be kind of like a stun, but you have a chance to, I guess, wake up uh, at the start of the turn and has 40% chance. So it's very, very strong. The damage is going up, the healing is going up. Yeah, this unit is going to be crazy, crazy good. I'm very, very excited. And you get an extra exclusive equipment here. Um, not extra, but a change where you get extended buff duration of Sacred Blessing, which you can take, which you can take if you want to do that. Next, we have um, the Yule Hut changes. Now she will reflect more damage. Always nice to do more damage, and also they are reducing the cooldown of her S3 because they're changing the Soul Burden overall. They're changing it from an extra turn to just increase damage for 10 souls, which makes a lot more sense. And this is going to make it so that she's pretty much guaranteed to one-shot units if she's below like. 30-40% HP, which will make her a lot, a lot better, not just in Guild Wars, but like everywhere, right? So I think she'll be very powerful. Here they're also changing Blooming Lydica. She's getting defense penetration on her S3, and honestly, people might think that she's like used in so many cleave comps. Yes, it's true, but uh, it kind of felt very bad to use her against high defense units, so because of this change against like I Karina's and stuff like that, you will do a ton more damage. Um, and yeah, you'll also see she still gets that penetration scaling with the speed difference, but now if you fight against like fast, de high defense units, you won't really have to worry about this too much. This might be mostly for Blooming Lydica, uh, not Blooming Lydica, uh, where is it? Designer Lilibet. You know, Designer Lilibet's getting changed, right, to actually um, be more useful now. And because Designer Lilibet is run on like sort of higher speed, maybe it's to actually make sure she doesn't get out of check. Uh, so we'll see that. You know, even if there isn't a big speed difference now, you could still penetrate defense by a decent amount. Next, we have a lot. So, Zori Lots is being changed. Uh, basically, they're changing it so that instead of an attack buff, you will actually grant exploiting weak points. Explo exploiting weak points is just a 20% overall final damage buff, which is crazy. And you'll have his S3 defense break now instead of silence. You can soul burn his S3 and then S2. And this change should be. Um, I think overall a buff, but it might be a nerf. I think it's a buff for units that can attack buff themselves. If they can't, it's not as good. So because of that, they're putting a recall in effect. So from the 24th of October after these changes until the next maintenance, uh, you'll be able to actually recall him and get whatever Moonlight 4 star that you want. Next, we have ML Furious. This unit was dog water. Um, basically, you're just going to be guaranteed an extra attack on his S1 now, which is, just makes a lot of sense, I guess instead of having RNG. Also, you'll give all of your team a defense buff instead of granting yourself Indomitable, which is effect resist, which you know makes no sense. And now you'll also see it's the same for, um, I guess not the same, but it is gonna be the same for his Awakened version. And then for his S3, instead of having to have like that random defense difference, which Smaugit has been a fan of lately, he just penetrates defense outright to 60%, which would be very, very good. Next, we have Veronica uh, being changed to actually increase her CR by 50% instead of 20. Just a good buff overall. She's only really using Cleave, but she's still decent there. I wouldn't say she's amazing, but defense. Also, you'll see Green Armin uh, basically being buffed to prevent 30% of the damage instead of 20% from single attacks. Green Armin is already a pretty decent Cleave counter, especially against like single attack Cleave. So definitely will be a better unit in that niche. And you'll see there's a ton of other things that are being changed. So. First off, we have Cruel Mischief being changed. Um, it used to be 15 to 30%, now it's 20 to 40. But now what you, you're gonna see is this artifact skill effect can only apply to one hero within a team. And a lot of people did abuse this. And if you actually did fully limit break a complete version of one Cruel Mischief, uh, a mischief, you would actually be hurting your account for Hollow Trials because it's better to have like one max and like one that plus 15 just for to spread your damage more. Um, but now you can see you're just going to be having to just fully max one copy, which you can only have for one account. And honestly, I did that too, so uh, I split my copy, so I'll have to combine it into one. But this makes more sense, right, because it's something that you can't go back on your account and redo. They're also chaining Pure White Trust. This is a Hawks artifact. 
Uh, now it's going to actually give you 10 souls after using a non-attack skill and have 100% uh, chance at max rank to give you crit damage. Uh, so it's going to be very good on Zahawk, right? Also be good on some other warriors with non-attack skills, but you know, there's so many good warrior artifacts out there, it's pretty hard to see this you know, being super broken. We also have Rihanna and Luciella. It's going to give you attack percent, just a buff, 10% uh, attack, which is going to be great. But you're going to see that this artifact will get nerfed, and we'll talk about that in the battle system adjustments down here. Next, we have Hostess of the Banquet. This is Midnight Galilius. Um, this is a limited artifact. You're going to see that when you're attacking, if the target's health is 50% or more, you do extra damage. Now they're splitting it up, which is what they should have done. You know, just a flat damage increase. And when the target is 50% uh, or more max health, uh, you'll actually do an extra additional damage. So it's just going to be way more consistent. So it's a lot better. I don't know if you'll run this on anyone. Probably only if you're running effect resist Midnight Galilius. But besides that, you know, just an overall buff. And then we have the big change here so battle system adjustments so extra turns basically if you're using ran or para with rihanna and luciella you know how like ran and para have extra turns on their s2 and s3 um basically you have two chances to proc rihanna and luciella and if you actually proc it twice you get two extra turns that's why it was super broken and you could just keep like looping which was super annoying but now they're changing it so that if you do proc it twice you still will only get one extra turn now instead of two so it's a pretty big nerf that's the only real big reason why you use it on them. And because of that, anything with like extra turns built in, like Butterfly Mandolin and Rihanna and Luciella, are being recalled. So you can actually turn them in for five star um, artifacts here, and you'll get back you know, however many you know, limit breaks and stuff like that as well. For me personally, I think I might recall it because I don't know if you'll use this on anyone now because you only use it on Ran and Para because it was so broken. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments down below though what you guys think about this patch overall. And if you're recalling Rihanna and Lucilia, if you have it, and I'll see you guys next video.